Hello folks, I'm back to showcase my experiences over years of testing. The last few years I have been randomly testing drivers, cards, architecture, and stuff of that nature. And I have come to a conclusion for many different variations for Windows XP Retro Gaming to get the best of legacy and the best to the point of games like Skyrim, Dungeon Siege 3, every game at the very tail end that you can get running on XP to get the all around best results. I have to go back with NVIDIA to get to that point. I have to go back further with NVIDIA than I do AMD and ATI. So, that being said, I've got a little layout here, and this is the list of drivers that I highly recommend when using these architectures of these cards. My favorites for the 2600 XT through the Certain variants of the 4650, this one is kind of finicky. It's a his, overkill fan, but certain 4650s to get running properly on XP with the driver with Callus Control Center and all that stuff working great. I've come with two options. For the 2600 XT, you've got both these options. You've got 8.4 Callus, Callus 8.4, I'll tell you why I enjoy that driver, and it does a decent job overall. It's not the best driver, but it does a decent job. It's stable, and it works pretty good. 8.4 is more of a nostalgic-style driver. There's two things it's got going for it. It's the first driver to allow you to do aspect correcting on Radeon cards. It is also the final driver that has the old ATI mascot Ruby on the welcome screen. That's the final driver, 8.4 Callus. I found it to work great with the 2600 XT and the 2600 Pro. Uh, it may, if I'm not mistaken, I've tested it with a 1300 Pro, so the, the generation right before early terror scale, and I believe the 8.4 will work on that one as well. It definitely works on the 1300 Pro. Some of the other ones, it's hit or miss. You can get maybe the driver to actually work. I think, yeah, I just tested an X1600 Pro from a Dell OEM, and it will install the driver, but it will not stop install the control center. And it's, so, uh, <clears throat> it mostly works on that card, but, from experience, I know it works great on these on this card. As far as this card, this is a good card when you're having trouble with this range of cards to try. This is a four. So this is the HD four thousand series. So anything in between these two eras, I found a great driver. Now don't let this fool you. This is a totally different driver than the standard version. It is 13.4, Legacy Beta. It's distinctly different, different than the standard 13.4 in that it's a much larger file. And I've tested it, and all the problems that I ever had on any later cards with standard 13.4, that problem is not there with the Beta Legacy version of 13.4. And like I said, you've got to... Search on the internet, and it will be about 180-something megabytes. The standard one is like 96 to 97 megabytes. So, you'll know uh, a good indicator that you're getting the right one is the size, the approximate size. So, so there's my two favorite drivers to try with these type of cards, the HD 2600 XT, 2600 Pro, and even some of the X1000 cards.
the pre tear scale, the last of the pre tear scale, all the way up to these type, certain types of, you know, cards like this. Okay, let's get to the next line. We're going down. Okay, we're back. We're back to the HD four thousand. Here's an example. This is one that I had to get because. I didn't even know they made a 4860. This is in between a 4850 and a 4870. We all know that. So, but it's not a real super common model. And I do like collecting these not super common models. So we got this here. And we got the first generation new in box GCN1 1 gigabyte HD 7850. Now, I used to think Terrascale was the, the, de the final architecture to use on XP to get that legacy compatibility and future compatibility with the later stuff that you can run on XP. But I stand corrected. I found that the 7850, 7770, 7750, and all of those early GCN cards, similar to that, can take one driver that retain all the legacy code in it as well just like the Terra scale so for this range of cards there's only one there's only one driver that I highly recommend Catalyst 13.1 fine for the Fire Pro there's a variant on the V5800 V4800 V3800 I have a driver disc of it and it seems to be a very good driver as well but that's for Fire Pro but as far as mainstream Radeon cards, these like Calus 13.1. That's the best all around. I've gotten the best results from top to bottom. Now I'm not going, I'm not testing for uh, one or two less frame rates and stuff like that. That's not what this, the point is. I'm talking about game compatibility and stableness and driver features 13.1 with xp 13.1 stop go and don't go beyond <laughs> all right now this is simple we're coming over to nvidia now this is a wild card right here but let's get straight to the architecture that i highly recommend for nvidia and this goes there's a broad range of these of this architecture we all know that okay Here's the GTS 250. It's a BFG edition. I wanted to have a box copy it. It was brand new. I have used it a few times, but I've kept everything and kept it in the best shape I can. I've just used it in test benches and you know just for testing purposes. And I also found out that that shroud is not the same shroud that was on the actual card. So BFG did a little false advertisement on that, but it's still decent. I still like the card. So anyway, I'm going to explain why this driver is hands down the best retro Windows XP driver all around. And that is 258.96. Tesla, Tesla, all the Tesla stuff, and I meant to mention Curry. So even the 6,000 and 7,000, uh, uh, like the 6600 GT, 7600 uh, GS, and all those Curry cards, the Curry architecture. It also likes this driver. It does well with it as well. I'm not going to uh, leave them out. I just didn't think to bring over a card to represent that one. But that driver is good from Curry. From 2004, all those cars to 6,000, 7,000, all through the 8,000, 9,000, 200. I guess if you find an OEM 100, it might work. It should work fine with it as well. And there's one uh, common 300 card that works well with this driver as well, and that is the GT330 fuel. It's actually a good all-around little card. It's like a GT uh, GT240. It's basically on par with it it's just that you can find them a whole lot cheaper you can find them for six seven dollars a piece and they're good little retro cards in that context 
for the for the price and they work well with this driver and all the features that I'm going to explain are enabled with that driver this driver enables a lot of features that are missing on later architectures from NVIDIA now this is a wild card this is a GTS 460 this is a Fermi it's an early Fermi that's the key it will accept this driver now that being said it still has caveats that all the Tesla and Curry cards don't have you will get the features of aspect correcting and all that since it can take that driver that is still enabled even on this Fermi car what you do lose is a lot of legacy compatibility with older games on this architecture so the architecture while it can take this driver that these older cards can take there is a roadblock in the architecture that don't allow certain older games to run whereas this architecture this and curry can run those games with no problem but that being said i'm going to list a few other examples regarding uh not only the fact that this driver is so good for windows xp if you're dual booting windows 2000 and xp with like an fx uh, 1800 quadro that's a good dual boot graphics card it's got good power it's a 768 megabyte uh gddr3 card it's got pretty good power good performance and for a dual boot xp windows 2000 build that driver works like a charm on it as well so it's got this is a very versatile driver stable and versatile so this is definitely the elite all-around driver for those use cases I found <clears throat> you can make a lot of things run great with those drivers so that's my Nvidia uh, breakdown honestly speaking if you don't play a lot of the real real old stuff and you're not trying to get the old real old stuff going but you want the aspect correcting features then you're fine with going with this a 460 that'll give you plenty of power for basically any XP game you want you really don't need to go to Tesla I mean to to Kepler later Tesla, uh, later later Fermi Kepler or, or Maxwell I know Maxwell also is supported on Windows XP but those cards you're really not utilizing the horsepower past this on XP just to be honest with you this is like your this is your roadblock this is powerful enough to run everything you need to run on Windows XP so if you want some that's just a complete powerhouse and play the absolute tail end of XP stuff like Dungeon Seas 3 uh, Skyrim the original Skyrim of course and uh, many other 2012 13 games that you can get to run on XP this is card this card will do a great job for that and you will still get your aspect correcting thanks to this driver right here now I'm gonna do a video in the future uh, maybe sooner than later to show you the example of how you get the aspect correcting working properly on these NVIDIA cards uh, this is this is out of the box you go in you set the settings to aspect correcting and it works so ATI and AMD did really well with keeping good uh, drivers for aspect correcting and all that on Windows XP so I still put Radeon cards as a whole the best option but for certain niche cases I can see use cases for these as well especially Tesla I do like the Tesla line and the and even the curry if i want to really tinker with something keep it a little more period correct with some of my older stuff i could go to curry and and you know run uh one of them with this drive but anyway this is matt with a brief explanation signing off